All right, guys. So put that phone down. Don't interrupt me. Focus up. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask, okay? Comments, concerns, disagreements, okay? Well, we'll cover that at the end. So don't forget to jot it down. Last week, guys, our brother Raphael came with a scripture from Philippians chapter three. He had some other ones, but Philippians chapter three. And we're going to revisit these scriptures because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, uh, we have to, as we're being transformed by the renewing of our minds, we are reprogramming the way that our minds function and operate. We're reprogramming and a reprogramming. Sometimes we have to consistently address a particular thing in order to lock that thing in. One of the things that I say always, like, you know, I just got to lock this thing in. You need to lock this thing in. We locked a thing in by constantly putting that in our mind. If somebody was to, this is why we encourage our children, you're going to be great, you're smart, you're funny, you're this, you're that. We encourage our loved ones because we want to speak life and get that, get them to lock it in. For when the world presents to them differently, oh, you're a loser, you are this, you are that. Well, that's not true because the truth is. And so we want to lock these things in, these, these principles, these the identity of Christ here. And so if I've talked to you throughout the week, you've already known, if I've talked to you at length throughout the week, you already know what I'm about to talk about here, but we're going to take it to a different place in scripture. And we might be here for a couple weeks because we want to lock this principle. We want to lock this reality. We want to lock this truth in to where when I say something, I don't even have to think about this because truth comes out. A lot of times when you ask the question, what do you think about this? And you blurt this out and you're like, oh, wait, no. That's what was there. Out of the mouth, out of the heart flows the issues of life. And so if our heart is on that subject and it thinks that way, if thinking that way, that's what flows out. But we want to get it to a point where, and that's look, we're in a process of being transformed by the renewal of our, our minds. We've been born again. We've been saved. We've been set apart and all this stuff. But our mind has to catch up to what it is the spirit knows. And so my spirit can know all truth, and it does. My spirit can know all truth, and it does. But my mind doesn't know what my spirit knows until we bring it together. All right? And so we're going to Philippians chapter 13 through 14. And then we're going to jump to Genesis 12. We're going to jump to Genesis 13. And we're going to jump to the gospel of John. Brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to read that again. Philippians chapter three, verses 13 through 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the pride of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. One of the things that I find when, when you know dealing with people, one of the things that I find is it's hard for us to let go of the past. It's hard for us to let go of the things that have happened to us five minutes ago, five years ago, five months ago, a decade ago. It's hard. We turn and we're constantly doing this. I remember when you, man, that was a couple years ago. I remember I'm looking back. I'm reaching back. And if I'm reaching back, I'm not reaching forward. If I'm, if I'm doing this, trying to walk forward on a narrow path, I guarantee you're going to walk off of the narrow path because you're doing this. The path is so narrow that we walk on, we have to walk one foot in front of the other, not feet, even feet beside by side. We're doing this. We're not going to be walking on the narrow path. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to press forward towards the prize, the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. Because we're no longer looking at him, we're looking at everything that has gone wrong before me. We're looking at everything that has offended me yesterday, a, a moment ago. Every moment that goes by is the past. I snapped in the past. 
I just had that conversation in the past. The sentence that I just finished is the past. But we will take something that happened, whether it's yesterday, five minutes ago, and we, we embrace it. We keep it here in our present. We lock this thing into our present. So the next time, okay, if somebody said this to me a few years ago, I know what that person meant. And so when somebody says this to me five years later, oh, that's how you're gonna carry it? I'm looking at my reference point from the past opposed to looking at it from the mark reaching towards the prize. And Samantha said this earlier, look, I'm not looking at you according to the flesh. I'm going to look at this now according to the spirit. So if you do, if you have done the very same thing that this person has done five years ago, my new way I need to look at this thing is through the eyes of Christ. Why am I expecting free behavior from somebody that's enslaved? Why am I expecting a, some, someone that is dead to present life to me? But instead, I get offended. Instead, I embrace, see, this is why, because five years ago this happened, here it is happening again. This stuff keeps happening to me. I'm in a demonic cycle. I'm in all of this stuff because we're too busy looking at the past. Now, you may have had demonic issues in the past before you were born again. Even, even now, you may have allowed an enemy to have his way in your life, even after being born again. But even that is the past when we understand that I'm looking to him. I'm looking to the future. I'm looking to, I'm reaching forward, pressing forward toward the mark, the prize of the high calling. High calling in, in God is to manifest Jesus. It's to manifest him in the earth, in my situation, in my life, in the lives of others. In Genesis 12, Starting in verse one, we read, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house and unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took his wife, Sarah, I'm sorry. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haram, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. All right. God told him, look, come out of your country, come from your kindred, and come from your father's house. You go, Abraham, into the land that I show you. He was talking to Abraham, so he was talking to Sarai, Abraham's wife as well, because they were one. God didn't promise Abraham something that, was, that, that did not apply to Sarai, his wife. Oh, God don't have no respect for women. It's, people say that. God don't have no honor for women. They're one. They are one. So if Abraham is blessed, Sarai is blessed with him. All right? But when we look at it like that, we're thinking carnally. All right? So now the Lord said, get thee out of our country. Get from thy kindred our father's house, and I'll make a great nation of thee. And Abraham set forth, and we get down to verse 4, he departed as the Lord spoken unto him. Abraham said, for, okay, come on, sir, wife, let's go. Boom, let's go. But guess who decided they wanted to tag along? Lot decided, you know what? I'm going to come with you. And I get it, right? Um, because when you look uh, in, I think it's chapter 11 of Genesis, Abraham's father had three sons. Abraham, Haran, and uh, I forget the name of the other guy. <laughs> but he had three sons. And Haran died, but Haran was the father of Lot. All right, and, yeah, and, and we're talking, Haran was the name of Abraham's son, but Haran was also a city that they went to as well. All right, so you're going to hear Haran again. And so Haran had died, and so Tara, uh, I think that's how they pronounce Tara, Tara, he um, took Lot in and, and began to raise Lot up. And so eventually 
Terah died, Abraham's father died, and it was Lot, Abraham, and Sarah. But, a, but Lot was part of his father's house. He said, come out from your kindred and from thy father's house and go out to a land which I show you. He set forth to do that. And guess who came along with him? Lot went with him. Lot went with him. Was Lot supposed to go with him? Come out from amongst your father's house. You go. But Lot goes along with him. Well, but that, that ain't Abraham's fault that Lot went with him. Where are we going here? But then it says in verse five, and Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the soul that they had gotten in Haran. So he, Lot went with him, and he said, all right, come on, let's go. All right, yeah, it's not a big deal, Goldie, you know, blah, 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 blah. Okay. When God tells us to do something, he, he tells us to do it, period. That's, this is what he wants us to do. Mm, man, okay, here we go. That's what he wants us to do. And so in a part, Abraham was being obedient. And in a part, he didn't stand up to be like, look, Lot, I get it. Oh, hang back, bro. Hang back. I got to go do this. Hang back. I have to go do what God has told me to do. And he told me to come out from amongst my father's house, come out from amongst my kindred and go. Okay. But yeah, we went. Look, look, let's, let's look here. Okay. We're going to go to Genesis 13, 5 through 13. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, had flocks and herds and tents. Wow. Lot got blessed for tagging along with Abraham. He got blessed. Right? He went along with Abraham. He got blessed. He had flocks, herds, and tents. And the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. So Lot had a lot. Abraham had a lot. So much that the land couldn't support them both. I can't even, I can't even, I can't even fathom that. The land was not able to bear them both because they had so much, the two of them, on their own, had so much. The land ain't able to bear them. But look at this. So that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwell in the land. It's okay. Lot was blessed. Abraham was blessed. Lot was blessed because of Abraham. But look, when this blessing happened, they couldn't dwell together because their substance was so great. And the herdmen were at strife. Lot was supposed to be part of Abraham's past, but he brought the past along with him and created strife in the blessing of God that he had set forth for Abraham. Can we see this today? When we're reaching back to the past, trying to walk in the blessing of God, we are messing this thing up. We're creating strife. We're creating heartache and pain unnecessarily. Can we see this today? And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we are brethren. Is not the whole land before thee separate thyself, I pray thee, from me? If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Well, if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves one from another. Problem. Look at Lot's character here. In this particular situation, Abraham is the elder. Though Abraham being a, a, a man of God, understanding that the Lord is with me, choose Lot. You choose Lot. Lot should have said, oh, no, sir. No, sir. I see it, but no, sir. You choose. That wasn't Lot's heart. Lot said, oh, ooh, look over there. That's the best land. I'm going to take that for myself. That was his heart. I'm the younger. My elders, you know, I went with my elder and got blessed. But now, oh, that's the best land over there. That's what I'm going to take. You take that old dried up thing over there, Abraham. Abraham didn't trip. Why didn't Abraham trip? Because God was with Abraham. 
If I had a dry desert, then he's going to make it an oasis. Why? Because God is with me. Man, you see a renewed mindset principle here, and you don't, you don't see that happen, but Abraham didn't trip about him taking the best land. No, if you go left, I go right. You go right, I go left. Don't matter, because in this situation, in this situation in Abraham's life, he was trusting God. And you can trust God on one hand for one situation and turn right around and drop the ball in the next, because we see Abraham do that. I trust you with this, Lord, but when it comes to this, uh, let, me, let me hold on to that. And then we mess it up every time. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about what's going on here. We're talking about leaving your past behind and bringing your past with you and creating an unnecessary strife, unnecessary contention. Abraham, if he'd have stayed with Lot, if they would have stayed together, Abraham would not have been able to move into the blessing that God had for him because the land was not able to sustain them both. But if we'd have clung on, look, we're going to hold on to this thing. We're going to hold on to this thing. It, he would not have been blessed in the way God had, had intended to bless him. But it's finally, okay, when this contention comes, now I finally got to let go of the thing in the past. I should have left Lot back in the beginning. But I let him tag along and took him with me. I didn't stand up and say, no, my brother. No, I'll, we have to separate here. I have to do this alone. I have to do this with me and God. He didn't do that. And so then Lot chose all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves one from another. Abraham dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his, hit, his tent towards Sodom. Amen. And so again, we see when God is telling us to leave our past behind, reaching forward, pressing toward, for the mark of the high calling. God had gave Abraham a promise. I will make a great nation of you. The land that you see before you is yours. Look east. After, after Lot left, it said, look east, look west, look north, look south. Everything that you see, that included where Lot went, everything that you see, I'm giving unto you. I'm going to give to you, your children. Everything that you see around you. Abraham, I'm with God here. God is with me. And so, just to move on a little bit, we're going to John chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. Sit up, both of you. We're going to John chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot perceive it. He cannot understand it. He cannot see it the kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God isn't really observed with eyes. You go see in scripture, and I'm not going there, but we should be familiar with that. If not, we can, we can go over it. Jesus answered and said unto him, very rarely, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be, go and be born? He's thinking this thing naturally. Can I go a second time into my mom? and be born again? What are we talking about? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And today we're not going to do a whole big study on the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. But when Jesus begin to heal and touch people and, and cast out devils. And they said, look, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. It's at hand. What is our land today that we're promised? We can enter into the kingdom of God. But except a man be born of the water and born of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. So I'm born of the water. I'm born of the spirit, but my mind keeps me looking and reaching back to the past because I see something, I smell something, I taste, I experience something that was from before. And so I reach back. I reach back instead of reaching forward, pressing forward toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And so when I'm born of the water, 
old things pass away. We're going to come up all things on, in new in Christ Jesus. And my mind doesn't trust and believe that. My mind doesn't understand that because the way I, I, st- I got a feeling that I had felt before I was born again. So huh, I'm going to reach back. I got healed, but I have a feeling of something that I felt before I was healed. I'm going to reach back. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Let us move into our promised land, leaving behind the old things, the old nature, the old way of thinking. All the demonic things that were attached to us before being born again. We leave that stuff in the past. Every enemy, every enemy that presents itself to us, in the past, leave it in the past. Why? Why can we? But there seems like there's a very real and present danger right in front of me. Okay, I get what you're saying, but did not Jesus defeat the enemy? Did not Jesus disarm him, putting him to an open shame, as it talks about in Colossians? But it says, No weapon formed against me will prosper in the Old Testament in Isaiah. Sure. I created the waster to destroy. But for you, no weapon will formed against you shall prosper. But I see weapons, Lord. It's an illusion because he's disarmed the enemy, defeated him, put him to an open shame. But are we going to agree what's being presented to us? Are we going to agree with the lies that are being presented to us? Because that's all part of the past. The enemy had dominance over us at one point. That's part of our past. Can we walk in freedom, the newness of life in Christ Jesus? The kingdom, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Are we going to stay bound in the wilderness? Even if we choose to stay bound, that's still not a reality that's ours because we're free. That's a lie that we can believe, but it's not a truth. The truth is who the sun sets free. The truth is by his stripes. As Jace prayed earlier today, by his stripes, I am healed. I, by his stripes, we were healed. Even if I don't feel it right now. Because he said, and so that's true. And when we lock into what he said, we'll start to be able to experience it. And we've had testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony that reveals that truth. It's not not necessarily fun. It's not necessarily easy, but all things are possible. All right, and so with that, guys, we're going to open the floor um, to anybody that might have any questions, comments, concerns, disagreements. You know, we can open the scriptures and we can discuss these things. Um, As far as the word that has gone forth today, And again, I like to open the floor simply because, you know, coming up in churches and sometimes the pastor or the guest speaker will say something and you're like, huh? And you never have an opportunity to say, well, what is, what did you mean when you said that? Because when I look over here, it says that. So how does that work together? And so anybody, any questions, comments? Oh, okay. Yep. One at a time. I'm going to sit up so everybody can see here. Come on. What's your question? Why would God tell Abraham to depart the place again? Why would he? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, all right, look up. Sometimes when we're moving deeper into the things of God, we have to get into a place where it's just us and him. Sometimes if we hold on to all the old baggage, the old stuff, the old way of thinking, it, 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 it hinders us from being able to experience all that God has for us. And so again, when you're born again and old things pass away and all things become new, you're leaving old things behind. And so we can see that as a foreshadowing of what God has done, what Jesus Christ does. And when we're born again, remember we talked about foreshadowing a while ago, these things really happen, but how does that point to Jesus? How do we see Jesus and Abraham supposing to have left his family and all the old things? Because behold, old things have passed away. 
like sin, My like family. bondage, like the, like the, the, if somebody's demon possessed or, or oppressed, all that stuff, gone. We walk in newness of life in Christ Jesus, but we have to believe it. And Jesus is in our hearts. Oh, Jesus is in, in us, period. In our hearts, I get that's the, that's the concept, but he's in us, period. He's not basically God. He's in our body. He's in our body. Yeah, Come on, because we have the Holy Spirit. You understand? That makes sense? You get it? Good question. Great question. Thank you for paying attention. Come on, buddy. What sit up. Nope, sit up. Sit up. Because they want to hear it too. What is strife? Strife? Strife is like contention. Strife is like we're at odds with each other. We're at, we're at, um, uh, how can I explain that better, buddy? We are... We're aggressive towards each other. It can be can be at war, but not necessarily that deep. But we're aggressive towards each other. All right. Imagine if there was one piece of meat here, okay? And we're both hungry. And we're not looking at this thing through the eyes of God. We're gonna be like, no, that's mine, that's mine. Get off. You had you ate yesterday. No, I'm eating that today. Or, we're at contention. We're aggressive towards each other. Or you can just share. That's looking at it through the mind of Christ. Yes, we could share. Exactly. All right. Thank you for questions. Any more? We good? Thank you for paying attention. All right. Anybody else? All right. Well, <laughs> we have no questions. Lewis, I'm going to have you hit us with that poem and uh, get us on out of here.